Black bucket. What's in your black bucket, please? Garlic surprise. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just wanted to bring some examples of what I grow. I don't grow um, the varieties that Jill and Libby. Libby grow. I grow the Russian or elephant garlic. Yeah. And I only grow that garlic. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the Russian and, and or elephant garlic. Uh, and how it differs to the other varieties of garlic that we've talked about today? Well, I think strictly speaking, it's not technically a garlic. Yeah. Um, it's, it's more a leek than it is a garlic. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I'm, so, I'm sort of at the lower end of the social spectrum as far as garlic growers go. Acceptability, are you yeah. talking? Okay, they let we have a in. rebel in our midst. <laughs> they occasionally talk to me, but... Um, but from my point of view, it's got the allicin in it, which is the, the main chemical flavouring in garlic. Right. And so it tastes like garlic, um, it smells like garlic, it looks like garlic, so you know, from my point of view, it's a garlic. And you grow elephant garlic as opposed to these other varieties of garlic because? Because I suffer from the opposite problem to Gilles. Yeah. Um, can I just take a moment out and just pay homage to Gilles? Because, oh, please. Um, <laughs> sorry to embarrass you, but... Jill is one of the sort of people that you want to have founding an industry. Yep. He's always available, he's very generous with his knowledge, and his product is poster boy product. So um, I really appreciate Jill 10 years ago taking out the time and helping me to answer all the questions and telling me what I was doing wrong, and I really appreciate that. So thank you. That's lovely. Yeah. I think we should give both of them a round of applause right at this little point um, in time. So, I have the opposite problem to Gilles. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the Southern Highlands, I'm 700 metres above sea level, so I have a similar climate, but I have a lot more rain and I have a lot better quality soil. Right. So effectively over time, I'm doing the opposite to Gilles. I'm growing more and more different variety of vegetables and less and less garlic. So reinforcing the fact that basically you need bad soil to grow good garlic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, not too bad. Um, no. I mean, Li no, Libby, says Libby. No, says Libby. No, but Libby's probably, Libby's an orange, and orange does have pockets of extremely... Yeah. Like, if I wasn't in the Southern Highlands, I'd be an orange. Yeah, right. Because there's a bit of soil envy going on there. But okay. It's, it's, it's beautiful soil up there, but I have a higher rainfall. Yeah. Um, she mentioned 60 mils through winter. I get 600 mils through winter. Right, so... Well, you know, comparatively. Um, and so I have very good soil, very good rainfall, very good aspect. Just as an example, if you Except talk to Jill, sort of what is the maximum organic matter you want to have in your soil for growing garlic? You don't want any more than about, what, 6 7%? Yeah. yeah. Um, my lowest is 10%. Yeah. So, you know, and that, what that means is that my soil is going to be a home for a lot of the problems that garlic doesn't want to have. Right. So the garlic's adopted over the millennia to grow well in harsh conditions and poor soil. So the moisture and the funguses and those types exactly. of things, yeah. yeah. Um, and so for me, garlic <coughs> garlic has been a heartbreaking crop. Every year I've grown the garlic, I look at it and it's just this sea of silvery green, beautiful shiny stems all bursting out of the soil. And then two months later, just as we're about to harvest it, we get a huge downpour and it just goes black and starts to rot in the soil. And that happened four or five years in a row. And I just keep going because I'm an idiot and I just love that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't pay any bills. And but you do just grow the elephant garlic. These days I stick to yes. what I can do, not what I can't yeah. do. And the cloves are different on the elephant garlic, aren't they? They tend to be larger. Yeah. tend to be larger yeah oh here we go there's a really good example that's a solid golf ball of garlic yeah so you can see why they're potentially not always thought of as garlic right. they do look a bit like a small onion. onion and they get much bigger than that don't they you said up to 500 grams i haven't grown 500 grams no? but yeah they get pretty large right yeah. okay and, and one of the problems that i have is i used to have the problem you know, people say size isn't a problem, but in the garlic world, size is a problem. Um, and I used to grow these wiener, tiny little things, and it's just too hard to sell. Whereas that, or any bigger, is actually hard to sell, because yep. people just can't use that much garlic. Yep. 
at a time. Libby mentioned when she was talking about the um, the flowers of the garlic that they like to use all parts of the garlic, and she also mentioned the scapes. Now you also sell the scapes at market. So would you like to tell us first of all? Some people might not know what a scape is. Right. Okay. So a scape is technically the stem on with on the top of which a flower will bloom. As in a flower. Like beautiful garlic flower, like yeah. Like and this? so yeah. And so, grad, um, in about October, I suppose, the, the plant sends up a shoot, which is, in my case, a fairly, very succulent. Because you've got good soil, and you grow good, good garlic early on in the season. Early on, it's looking great. <laughs> and it shoots that up, and then what I do is I cut them off and sell them in bunches of 10 or whatever. Uh, for the people who've been hanging out for a garlic taste for the last... So months. it's another example of slightly extending the garlic season by using all parts of the garlic. And how, how do you like to cook with them? Uh, I just use it very much as a garlic. I think the, the trick with a garlic scape is it's a bit like asparagus in that there's a point in the stem above which it's very succulent right. and below which it's quite hard. So just find that by breaking it and then above that just chop it up finely and use it like garlic. Okay, so you're, you're chopping it up quite finely, you're yeah. not stir frying them? I can stir fry them. I don't like to eat it whole because it, it is, it's, it's full of garlic flavour and yeah. so you don't want to overdo it with the garlic. Right, mm. okay. Excellent. Um, and I suppose my last um, question to you, given that you're the one that really does grow elephant garlic predominantly out of this um, group today, What's your favourite way of cooking the elephant garlic and, and, and eating it? Right, so my favourite way is to get something like that and stick it on a baking dish. I, I, chop, I chop the top and the roots off, but don't worry about anything else. Uh, and then just keep cooking it probably for about 40 minutes at a reasonably high With oil? No, just as it is. Just dry roasted? Just dry roasted. Okay. And then the garlic's got enough moisture in it that it'll go beautifully sweet and it'll just turn into butter. And what temperature did you say? Well, I, I typically use 180. Yeah, okay. And um, and then when it starts oozing out, that's when you take it out of the oven. Yep. And you just spread that on bread with a bit of salt. So crack open the, the cloves and just spread it? Yeah, I mean, just chop the top off. Just and, chop the top off, yeah, yeah okay. Beautiful. So it's like a pot of garlic butter. It's, it is a pot of garlic butter, yeah, yeah. right there. Fantastic, that's awesome. All right, well, thank you very much, Phil, no for coming here today. Thank you. And um, pleasure.